all right welcome back welcome back guys hopefully part a of the exam was good for you guys uh sorry about the late video but i just i got tied up so part b introduction let's jump straight into it part b let me get my pen we'll have two activities activity four forensic analysis and activity five security report you get a template for activity four but not for activity five uh, part B information. Like part A, you will need to create a folder and export files. I will show this process at the end as I did for part A. You are only given one template for part B, which I said was um, forensic analysis, which is activity four. An authentication sheet. This is something that's given to you in the exam by the examiner. Um, not, not, not the examiner, sorry, the invigilator on the day. So don't worry too much about this. Uh, mark inf marks information. So uh, there's a total of 37 marks for part B. Now this might have changed slightly, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that means for part A, you have roughly 43 marks for part A. Uh, in part B, again, we have 14 marks for activity four, 20 marks for activity five, and you get three marks if you use the correct technical language. So make use of all of those terms that you learn, servers, malware, hacker, white hat hacker, black hat, black hat hacker, gray hat hacker, all of those random special terms, not random, but all of those special terms you learn, um, make use of them here. Don't just use very plain English because this is where you get to actually show what you know. Uh, part B information again, you will be given a new scenario. This is an update from the previous task. For example, the company has now fully moved to the new location. And this is what they, I think I copied this from the exam paper. That's why it's in bold. Uh, you advised Baljinder Singh of BCTAA on security matters for the move to the new location. Now, a few weeks later, he has called you in to review the investigation of a cybersecurity incident. So something has happened at his company. Something went bad and you are here to try and help. There has been a few incidents since last time we met Singh. We now need to go in, assess, and give some advice. The information you will get is a forensic is forensic evidence. So this is not a murder case. It's just evidence that you get when a crime has been committed. Simply issues that have arisen since the last time we spoke to Singh. That's what we're going to be looking at. Activity four, you will need to go over all the evidence provided to you. You will have a list of evidences. And I believe in the 2018 paper, we have six. It will not be obvious how this all happened at the beginning. You will make a well, you will essentially make educated guesses based on the information that you have. So I think on a 2018 paper, there were some pickpockets, some cards went missing. People say they didn't go here, they didn't go there. So we can make some educated guesses. Um, there were multiple reports of people being pickpocketed. That's what I've just said. So people not using their cards, but their cards being used is most likely as a result of them being pickpocketed. Now, I haven't read everything yet, so let me keep going. I'm going to read all the evidences first and then make use of it. Uh, read the evidence and highlight or write down things you are, well, things you think are important. I would do this for each piece of evidence, then bring it all together at the end. So uh, activity for what to do, look over all the evidence. If you think that something is important, make some notes. I'm saying this again because it's going to come in very handy. Make some notes. What stood out to you? I made notes on all of them. Not all were needed, but I still did it anyway. So for activity one, evidence, I said Singh's account of evidence. So that's the name of the um, piece of evidence, I think, or something very similar. Listed missing items. This is not often checked, meaning they only found out that some keyboards and mice were missing now because the phone and the laptop was missing. So maybe one thing that they should do is have a, a weekly or monthly check off of every item. So the phone was blocked where they said they called the phone company to block it. The laptop was tracked and I believe it was found in Nairobi, Kenya on the 9th of the 4th. Uh, no sensitive information on the file, so on the laptop itself, because they were only working on some fire extinguisher stuff, but there could be other pieces of information on the laptop um, that are sensitive. I didn't make notes on everything, so that's why I'm trying to give some context. Meeting with a management company, so that's the EH company. Cleaners and other EH staff are unlikely to steal. I remember this because they said they get paid quite well. EH makes sure that they pay them better than companies in the surrounding area to make sure that people are loyal, people don't normally leave, people are typically happy, you get paid more, you're happy with your job, everything's good. Pickpockets were on the Rome on Friday. So on the bank holiday Friday, there were pickpockets because other people mentioned that um, they've had stuff stolen or they were pickpockets about. BCTAA and recruitment agent had no break-ins but had thefts. So things were stolen, but there was no evidence that anyone broke a door, kicked a door in, broke a window. There was no evidence of a break-in, but stuff was still missing. 
phantom charges on people's cards, not system error. Now, I read a bit more into this and phantom cards mean that somebody was probably going around with one of those devices that you can simply wave over a bank card and it will charge you. So just a contactless payment machine, to be fair. This could be used for quite a few reasons. This could be used to clone your card in some cases. This could be also be used to clone the ID card because if you go and look at the 2018 paper, again, I didn't want to read the whole thing because it was very, very long. If you look at it, um, the card that they have to open the doors, you actually don't need to tap it on the door physically to um, touch each other. Once you wave the card in the general direction, I think they said roughly like 10 centimeters or something like that. So more or less the same as a contactless bank card, the same as your iPhone or Android phone, which you use to pay for stuff. It's more or less a similar system. So they might have found a sophisticated way to clone um, either the bank cards because people had phantom charges or they could have found a way to clone the access entry card thing that people use. Um, evidence three, was, was this not three? No, this is three. Door access control system log. So these are the four log numbers that came up as they shouldn't have been here at that time. Some of them said that they don't remember using the card at that time. Some of them said they definitely did not use the card at that time. So this could have most likely been how people got into the system. All people reported not remembering using the card or not using the card at all. Now, I don't remember, but from my reading, no one said that their card was actually missing. And that would have been very, very important. So, yes, there were pickpockets about, but at the same time, nobody's card was missing. So these people still had their cards as far as I'm aware. Activity for evidence four. Network diagram is the same as before. No visible updates present. I didn't notice any, but you guys might. So please go to the um, the link in the description and try and download the, the 2018 pass paper. I'm giving you the 2018 pass paper because that's the only one that I found that, that did not have the padlock on there. So that one should be available to the public. Laptop tracking software detected the laptop in Nairobi, Kenya when connected to a network. So when the laptop connected to a network, they did this track my device thing or locate my device. Same thing we have on our iPhones and Android phones. They have it on Windows 10 and Windows 11 as well. So they tracked it on the date was the 9th of the 4th, 2018. And the time was 11.22 a.m. in the morning, I'm guessing. And it was found or it was detected in Nairobi, Kenya. Very, very far away from the UK. But hey. Um, evidence six cybersecurity documentation details what people do in the event of theft of IT equipment, theft of data, infection of company IT systems with malware, unauthorized access to BCTAA systems. So this is kind of like their their policy on what to do if something goes bad. That's essentially what this is. So what do you actually do for activity four? Well, this is where we go. You need to think about all. Well, look over all the evidence, the brief, and the scenario, putting together everything that you think happened so again educated guests from my point of view i don't think these people were robbed in terms of their pockets were picked because it would have been noted in the evidences that oh my card was missing oh that must have been how someone got in none of them reported that so i'm going to make the assumption or, or the educated guess in this instance that um, people were able to go around with a machine tap it on people's chest or the back pockets or front pockets or handbags. And this is how they managed to actually get access to people's cards. They didn't actually have physical access as in they took it out their bags, but they cloned the cards. And cloning the cards means that they could write the, those same numbers onto a different card and have access in just the same way. So I believe they said it was like a 10 digit number. So once you can detect and read that 10 digit number, you can write it onto another card if you have a card writer. And that's it. That's how I think they got in. Um, this is the piece of evidence. Not Sorry, this is the template. My apologies. You get for activity four. This is given to you so you can make use of this. What I would do, I think I have it on the next slide, I would make a copy of this roughly five more times because in my case, I only have six pieces of evidence. In your case, you might have seven, you might have eight, you might have ten. However much you have, you copy it that amount of times. I already had it once, so that's why I'm going to copy it five more times. So let me explain what that means again. So the template will have five headings, evidence item, method of acquiring evidence, evidence detail, evidence reliability, and the conclusion. I'm just going to quickly go over what each of these mean because I don't believe I did it on the next slide. No. Evidence item. So I would simply label it like evidence one, um, evidence item one, and give the label that was given on the exam paper. And in this instance, I believe it was Balgin.
Baljinder's series of events or Baljinder's sings um, events of ac account of events, whatever it is, just label it as that. That's going to be for evidence item. For method of acquiring evidence, this is a bit different, but nothing crazy. Just say, for example, I think one of the other evidences was a meeting with the EH company. Just say interview was held and these people were involved and we managed to take statements from each person. That's it. So say how you actually got the evidence. Baljinder Singh would have given you a report. So let's say we're using the first one, um, which was his report. Method of acquiring evidence, Baljinder Singh um, remembered everything. He gave us an account of events or however you say that term. He made note of everything that he remembered and that was his um, evidence. Evidence detail. This is where you go a bit more into detail about your understanding of what the evidence is saying. You try to draw some information out of it. So Baljinder Singh, let me go back to his notes. This is why I made notes on it so I can keep going back and forth. So he said, um, he listed the missing items below. Uh, and he mentioned the laptop, the phone, three keyboards, two mice, whatever else was missing. And he stated that they don't actually know when the, the, um, the keyboards and mice were taken because they don't check these things very often. So that could have gone missing at some completely different time. It would make sense for someone to break into an office, see a fully fledged PC that's worth hundreds of pounds and steal the cheapest thing attached to the PC, which is a mouse and a keyboard. I can buy a mouse on eBay for 10 pounds or five pounds. I can buy a keyboard on eBay for 10, 15 pounds as well. So steal something that costs 25 pounds versus something that costs maybe four or 500 pounds. Doesn't really make sense. It would make sense for them to steal the entire PC. Um, he also gave us information that the phone was most likely blocked. So it wouldn't be of any use to anyone. Let me explain this again. Let me give a bit more context. When you block your mobile phones, your mobile phones has a Mac address, but it also has an IMEI. So I M E I number and that's a unique number again to that specific mobile phone so anywhere you go in the world to make a phone call you're going to need to have access to an IMEI number and if that IMEI number has been blocked which means that the phone has been blocked you won't be able to use that phone so the person who stole it is probably going to have no use for it now or at least in this country because I don't know if IMEI numbers um, are transferable across regions actually and then uh, he also mentioned that the laptop was tracked and it was tracked to Nairobi, Kenya. He said no sensitive information was on the laptop at the time because the only thing that they were working on was something to do with fire extinguishers. Um, I don't know if there is if there might be sensitive information on the laptop from previously. I don't know how it works. We can assume that there might be a word document in a recycle bin somewhere that has some details on there. Let's just assume the worst in some cases. So that's what I would do, or that's the description I would give for evidence detail. Just give as much detail as possible without rewriting what they've said. Put it in your own words. Say what you got from it. And that's it. Evidence reliability. How reliable do you believe the evidence to be? Baljinder Singh is the professional, well, the IT person at this company. He wasn't at work at the time. He's just giving um, an account of the events that he thinks happens. Somewhat reliable. I think probably the most reliable piece of evidence on this was, let me go back, let me go back, was this thing here, the, the door access control system log, because this tells us exactly the four ID numbers that try to access the system. Um, so the first number was the floor. So one person from the 18th floor tried to do it and three people from the 19th floor tried to access the system, right? So this is probably the most concrete piece of evidence that we have because there's no way or it's very unlikely that the person who broke into the system would be able to change this information as well. So for some of them, it's going to be medium reliability, low reliability, but don't worry, I'll, I'll go over everything and I'll explain once I get to the template and conclusion. The conclusion part is not the conclusion for every single thing for activity for it's only the conclusion for this thing. So you, again, going through all of this, getting your evidence, you try to conclude what you think the evidence is telling you. So the, so the evidence tries to tell you, okay, well, um, pe people seem to have um, phantom payments on their cards. Nobody said that their card was stolen. So maybe for this one piece of evidence, for evidence number, I think it was, let's just say evidence number four, I think this is what happened. You try to conclude. Anywho, uh, evidence for a template explained. 
you make use of all the headings for each piece of evidence. 2018 had six pieces of evidence or six pieces of evidence. Copy and paste the headings five more times because I have six. I'm going to copy and paste five more times, but you're not done yet. The last thing you have to do is to do another conclusion. What does that mean? After you fill in the table for each piece of evidence, you still need to conclude overall. So outside of the table, so let's just say that's my, um, my table for evidence number one, fully finished all the points I mentioned earlier, table number two, table number three, table number four, table number five, table number six. And the very last thing I do outside of the tables is do a conclusion for everything. And the conclusion is, is going to essentially write up, try to paint a picture of what I think took place. Um, you should add how how and why you think it happened. So how do you think the break-in happened and maybe why you think it happened, given context as well. So maybe I would maybe say something along the lines of um, it's a bank holiday. People are going to be drinking in the restaurant and, and, and the bar. People aren't as aware when they're drunk or tipsy. Um, the pickpockets or the thieves or the infiltrators or the attackers took advantage of this. They went around with a cloning device um, cloning people's cards. They cloned bare minimum four cards that we know of. When they tried to use the person's card from the 18th floor, they were not allowed in because clearly that person didn't have 24 hour access. Eventually they tried two more cards. Those didn't work as well. And finally they got to a senior manager's card, but because that person is a senior manager, they had 24 hour access. And because they have 24 hour access to all areas, they were um, eventually let in. Once let in, they were able to go around and start stealing stuff. So that's how I maybe would start doing my conclusion. In any case, hopefully that was useful. I'm going to now show how to do activity four.